So, electric cars are boring, are they? No fun to drive, are they? Too big and heavy, are they? <laughs> Try this one. This is the Carice TC2, and it is the antithesis of everything you think you know about what an electric car can be. And I realize it may look like some sort of retro resto modi conversion jobby, but make no mistake, this is a brand new electric car designed with one singular purpose, making you giggle like a giddy child. <laughs> and it's really good at it. It's quite cold in the Netherlands today. My fingers are very cold, but I'm not getting it out until they've frozen off. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. If you like the Fully Charged Show, you will love our Everything Electric exhibitions around the world. Next up, Everything Electric Australia. And Everything Electric London. Get your tickets today. Oh my goodness, look what we have here. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this to scale? I know everything looks small next to me, but this is, this is a very small sports car. Welcome to the Carice TC2. Perhaps you've not heard of it. Perhaps you've not heard of Carice. So let me give you a little history lesson. These guys have been building small, lightweight electric sports cars in very low volume since 2011. They've been doing so deliberately quietly for a very select group of customers while refining their recipe until arriving at something that they feel is worth shouting about and sharing with the world at large, which they now have in the form of this. It's done, it's ready to go, and first customer deliveries of this little sports car will begin as soon as the end of this year, perhaps very early next year. And we are talking about a small company here. We're talking eight to 10 people build these cars. And the staggering thing is, Basically everything you see here is done in-house. This is no parts bin type contraption. They've not nicked the doors off a BMW and the headlights off an Audi, no. Everything from the stitching of the leather seats to the assembly of the battery packs to the paint, everything is done in this little facility by eight to 10 people here just outside of Amsterdam. It takes about a year to build a car. They're hoping to get that down to about 10 cars a month down the line, but these are labors of love. They are exquisite little contraptions. So let's just take a little walk around this thing and pick out some of the lovely details. Let's start with the size. It is so small. I mean, really small, 3.5 meters long. That's Fiat 500 size and about 1.6 meters wide. Tiny, tiny little sports car and such an elegant shape as well. They've clearly gone for a sort of retro look. And oftentimes when you build a new car and go for a old school styling, it can come out just a bit wrong. Google David Brown Speedback GT if you want to see an example of what I mean. But this to my eye looks just right. It's so elegant. I love the way that this rear arch just cuts off that wheel. I love the fact that they've gone for big, chunky, tires, lots of squashy sidewall, which just completes that old school look, but also really gives it an old school feel when you drive it. You've got lots of squashy tire to lean on through corners. As far as braking, we've got regen brakes as well as disc brakes, but really subtle regen. So you come off the throttle, a little tiny bit of regen, barely noticeable, and then it's up to you to use those unassisted brakes to do all the stopping yourself. They want to give it a really analog feel. No roof, that's just for this prototype. Rest assured, customer cars will have a lovely convertible fabric roof. And then can we just talk about this for a second? This, this is a naked chassis for a Carice TC2. Like I said, everything is done in-house. So this is what they start with. And this is interesting because it's a bespoke EV platform. But normally when we use that phrase, we're talking about a skateboard chassis with all the stuff really low down in the floor to give you as much space as possible in the cabin. This is a little sports car, so the brief is a bit different. What they're instead doing is running the battery through the middle of the car. It just slides right into this central spine, and that's really, really good for uh, weight distribution. It's really, really good for center of gravity. Of course, that does mean that there's gonna be a sort of a hump through the middle of the cabin, but that's fine in a little sports car. You don't want open plan, you want cockpits. That battery, by the way, 31 and a half kilowatt hours, which is plenty in a car this size. The thing only weighs, wait for it, 630 kilos. 630 kilos, this whole car. 200 of those kilos is the battery. And that battery is good for about 300 kilometers of range as well. It's modestly weighted, it's modestly powered. Rear wheel drive, single motor, 
50 odd horsepower. Are you hearing these numbers? 50 odd horsepower, 630 kilo curb weight. This is, this is the proper stuff. Incidentally, it's an L7 micro car. Legally speaking, it's classified as a micro car. As I understand it, they didn't really plan for it that way. It just sort of is because it's so small and light. It just happens to be. But one with decent storage and practicality. This is not something you see on many dinky sports cars. That's a properly usable deep boot. Goes all the way down to the floor. And I like this as well. This is a nice touch. You'll notice there's no charge port anywhere on the outside of the car. They just decided it was too pretty to ruin with a big door flap. So, charge port is just inside here, and there's a little gully here to run the cable out of. So you plug it in, leave it just like that, and your lovely bodywork isn't ruined by flappy doors. So come on then, what's this little sausage like to drive? Well, let's just start by recapping the key figures, and crucially, the things that this car doesn't have. So. No steering assist, wooden steering wheel, no ABS, no braking assist of any kind, no traction control, no roof, no annoying BP sensors yelling at you every few minutes. Just you, 50 odd horsepower, 600 odd kilos, and the open road. Now, typically when I drive electric sports cars, I find myself kind of making excuses for the electric powertrain going, oh, you know, it's not that exciting, but everything else is. Other things can be exciting in a car. But actually, I'm finding this little electric drivetrain really thrilling. I like the noise, I like the whine. If you listen to in-car footage of like prototype race cars, that's what they sound like inside because of the straight cut gears. So that's what it's giving me race car and it's plenty punchy yes it's only 50 horsepower but the car only weighs 600 kilos it's plenty quick what i love is when i asked richard the co-founder for a 0 to 60 time he kind of just went nah doesn't matter and i'm sure he knows what it is but he doesn't want to tell me that's not what this car is about they're not chasing performance figures it's quick enough to make you giggle and that's that's all it needs to be on this very cold stretch of Dutch road with these slightly cold tires and no traction control. I think it would break the rear wheels loose at any given time if I allowed it to. I'm gonna try and keep it pointing the right way given that this is the only one in existence currently and it's basically priceless. So we've got a surprisingly satisfying, surprisingly loud electric powertrain with plenty of performance. As for everything else, I mean glorious. Glorious. Completely unassisted braking and steering feels so refreshing after driving oodles of big crossover SUV type things. I know exactly what is going on through the road surface, even if I have my eyes closed, just through what I can feel through my hands and what I can feel through my foot when I press on that brake pedal. And that just makes it so confidence inspiring despite the lack of any kind of safety assist at all. I know exactly what the car is doing before it's going to do it, so there's nothing intimidating about it. They have spent a decade, literally a decade, refining the handling, tweaking the suspension, fiddling with the chassis to arrive at something that they are satisfied with. It's so balanced, quite comfortable as well. Granted, this is a very smooth road, but even going over these speed humps at a bit of pace, this is the thing about light cars, they just glide over the road surface and it just feels so small. It feels so small and light, and that is the best thing that a driver's car can be. The best thing that a car can be in order to be rewarding and exciting to drive is small and light and low. I feel like my ass is gonna scrape the ground at some point. I'm sitting right on the floor, tiny little dimensions, road feels enormous, so I'm threading my way through corners. I'm going in wide and kissing apexes on a road that a Porsche Taycan would barely fit down. It's just such a visceral reminder of what makes an exciting, engaging driver's car. It ain't power, it's not acceleration figures or top speeds. It's how it feels. How does huge man fit in small car? Well, quite well, actually, believe it or not. I mean, it helps that there's no roof on this one, but look at this. This is the great thing about this small sports car being made by Dutch people. They know how to make a car for the taller man. 
Thank you, Netherlands. So, what have we got in here? Well, a flipping work of art is what we've got in here. Every single thing that you see, every single thing that you touch has had so much time and thought poured over it and it really shows. So we've got this super old school cabin design. I love this stainless steel across the dash with this beautiful kind of circular finish. Again, quite reminiscent of Spikers of the early 2000s for me, another low volume Dutch sports car brand incidentally. Beautiful wooden steering wheel. It's got these little ridges on the back to help you grip it and it's just so pretty. And then look at this, look at the switch gear. This, this is my indicator. Listen to this. Come on. That, it doesn't self cancel and I'm so glad because it means I get to use it twice every time I turn. That is just glorious. This is my drive selector. Forward, neutral, back, hazard switch. I mean, they're just the nicest switches. They're so satisfying. Why did we lose this in modern car design? Why uh, did we forget how delightful it can be to press a button when it's nicely made? Same thing here, look, these are my windscreen. This is to go between eco and sport mode, headlights, heater down here. This is good. Obviously no infotainment screen, no uh, sat nav. So you think, well, at least they've hopefully given you somewhere to put your phone. They have. Look at this phone holder design. There you go. That's all you need, isn't it? Aux port there for your tunes. Lovely, beautifully weighted volume knob. Navigation on the phone, Bob's your uncle. And let's just talk about space. Like I said, surprising amount of room given it's a teeny weeny electric sports car. Good amount of room for my feet, good amount of room for my head. I don't know what it's like with the roof up, but I'm told it's actually pretty okay that even I would be fine. This of course is the battery running through the center of the car. Do you see what I mean? It, it doesn't bother you so much in a sports car because you like to be kind of hugged in and cozy. You don't need that open plan situation. So this worked really nicely for me. And again, look at this beautiful stitched leather. This is all done here by eight people. You know, what makes this car really special is that you don't have to be doing anything silly in it for it to feel special, to be enjoying it. Even if I'm driving super slow along a fairly mundane piece of road, it's still an occasion because I've got this gorgeous thin wooden steering wheel in my hands, which is sort of ribbed along the backside to give you extra grip. My hands are so cold, but I refuse to put my gloves on. I refuse because I want to feel this beautiful steering wheel. When you're going slowly, you have a moment to stop and admire the spectacular steelwork across this dash, the beautiful old school dials, the, the indicator switch. For goodness sake, when was the last time an indicator switch made you smile? This thing, every single time you get to pull that switch, it's a joy because it's the most tactile, beautifully built, beautifully finished thing you've ever touched. Every single mile in this car is a special occasion. And the price for all this meticulous craftsmanship, this obsessive attention to detail, unlimited smiles per hour, take a guess. I mean, what do you, what do you reckon? 100 grand? 200 grand? You've seen how much these things go for. No, the Carice is going to start from 44 and a half thousand euro before tax. Now, that's not nothing. It's probably the most expensive L7 micro car we've ever seen on the channel. But for what you get, it's staggering. Candidly, I have absolutely no idea how the company is going to stay afloat building these things, spending as much time pouring over them as they are for that price. <laughs> I don't know. Get one while you can. It's just joy on four wheels. And for me, it's a reminder of a few things. Number one, electric cars can be fun. They can be great driver's cars. You can have a great driver's car without an engine. Number two, modern cars are too big and too heavy. Way too big, way too heavy. This, this is how you make cars better, more enjoyable, more efficient, requiring less battery material. In the era of electric, it's more important than ever that we downsize and lightweight our vehicles. Why are they getting bigger? I don't know. And number three, it's a powerful reminder of the role that beautiful craftsmanship can play in making a car feel special. It's not just about drivetrains. It's not just about steering feel. It's about beautiful switches with lovely thunks. It's about gorgeous attention to detail that catches your eye and just makes you smile every time you look at it. I think we could do with a little bit more of that in modern cars as well.
You know, in England, we're very proud of our boutique sports car brands. We've got Caterham, we've got Morgan, we've got Lotus. These are global icons of low volume, lightweight sports cars. But they've had their lunch eaten here, haven't they? Because we visited Caterham earlier this year. We filmed with their electric sports car concepts. And they're exactly that, concepts. They're years away from being ready. This, this is done and dusted. It's ready to go. It's the first of its kind. And I have waited so long for my first experience with a lightweight electric sports car. I have waited for this day for so long. And you know what? Everything I hoped it would be and more. This is a very special car. And for me, it's final, unequivocal proof that whatever powers our cars in the future, there will always be driver's cars designed to do nothing other than make you smile. So there we go, the Carice TC2. Ever so cute. My hands are cold. I'm gonna go find a radiator. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching.